So behind me is the new Volvo C40. And we're going to go through today the, the design story behind this car, meet the designers, listen to the inspirations behind their work. Uh, we're going to start with exterior, and move on then to interior and colour materials, and really understand their inspiration from nature and light. Also talk about sustainability and using natural materials. We'll move on to then the user experience, so connecting the, the mobile phone really with the car, and also using the Google Assist with our new system. Now, the, the C40 really is uh, a new vehicle for Volvo, but it enhances and encapsulates the benefits of an SUV. So that's the easy ingress, egress, the high seating position, and the versatility which really connects with the lifestyle of our customers. Yet this is a sleek, dynamic, modern car. Now I have Tijon here with me from Exterior Design. Tijon, let's maybe talk about that sleek, dynamic line that we have on the C40. Well, I mean, the, the starting point of any good exterior design is, is with the proportion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's essential in this car, meaning the profile of the vehicle. We, we've established in the market a, a super successful XE40, where the play upon that vehicle was sort of this tough little robot mm. that had a lot of attitude. And I think this, this vehicle somehow captures even more character um, with, with the roof line. And this, this came from the initial sketch, really. Yeah. And then just how this project started, because I know that um, the, a lot of projects start through, a, of course, a strategy and a design brief. But I have to say on this one, it really did start with a sketch. I mean, when that sketch was created by the designer, it was, it was like, wow, here's a, here's a no-brainer. I mean, it was compared nose to nose with an XE40. Um, so that really led us in the, into development uh, right away. And what we tried to play is take all the successful elements of the XE40 design and really how do we, how do we capture them in this vehicle? And one of the ways we did that was playing upon this uh, painted roof or the different color roof. Um, that sets up an architectural item so we have this one line coming down the belt and up the C-pillar, mm. and then really the, the clamped roof that plants the car design. And that gives it the strong graphic between the, the roof and the lower part, and, the, and makes it easy identifiable as this, this strong Scandinavian design, mm. because it's simple, but it's the strong graphics. Yeah. Yeah. And when we talk about that clean lines and clean form language as well, one of the attributes in XE40 that has such a strong character, again, is this sort of monolithic approach. One of my uh, favorite sculptors is, is Brancusi, and he really plays upon that monolithic sculpture um, in his work. And I see that here as well, which we're very inspired by having this more or less one volume, and then we use and carve through sections. And it's so clear and obvious as a, of a theme in XE40 and C40. And that's the beauty. So we're taking almost a solid form, mm -hmm. carving away the material, and from that it creates then the clean graphics mm -hmm. of the car. Yep. It's a very logical, simple theme set up for the entire car. Yeah. So you see that in the, in the body side, like I just mentioned, but then you also see it in the main theme of the shoulder that wraps around mm. into the front of the car. Great. And now let's talk about the, the front, because I know um, certainly our philosophy with Volvo is about strong light signature, the Thor's hammer. Mm. So we, we keep that with this car, of course. Um, and I think it's also plays the importance of light with Scandinavian design, this strong um, element of, of light that you recognize the car. What about the rest of the, the front? I mean, we have uh, now the electric face. I mean, this is a full electric mm -hmm. SUV. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the challenges in this vehicle. How, how do we create this uh, electrified expression, sort of this efficiency in the vehicle? Mm -hmm. um, when we start with the nose profile, it really has carries on a similar character to its older brother, let's say the XC40, um, but with a closed grill. Yeah, we've and, taken out the grill frame yeah. around it, really gone flush and, yeah. and modern. Yeah. And that's, again, communicating that efficiency in the front. Um, it also helps above the grill itself. We have one line coming across above the headlight, mm -hmm. which I refer to as kind of an eyebrow. It gives a, a structure to the eye of the car. So the facial expression is still there uh, of this very menacing and powerful front end. Um, and when you combine that with the lower wings on the, on the front of the vehicle, that really helps plant and set the car architecturally on the ground. So in the, the front, with the, the lights as we were talking about, they have the latest state-of-the-art pixel technology, which is great. How does that play out on the rear? I mean, we, we have a very strong DNA identity of the vertical uh, tail lights, 
as that comes around. Yeah. But we did a little twist on the rear lights. Yeah, I mean, we have our, our extended roof line profile that goes from, from above Thor's hammer in the front all the way kind of up and over the roof and down the rear tail lights. And what you'll notice uh, for the first time, we've really taken our, our vertical signature and laid it down onto a coupe profile. Uh, and that was, that's definitely something new for us. I mean, Volvo really is clearly identifiable in the rear with his vertical taillights, much like Thor's hammer in the, in the front. So we have a very strong, strong light, yeah. lighting identity. Um, and we did a bit of a, a twist with this on the, on the C40, where instead of a solid line up the whole, uh, whole play, we did a segmented approach mm. on the vertical element. Mm. It's a very big lamp, <laughs> uh, but it allows us to do quite a sequential uh, welcoming light, yeah. which is, is quite cool. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, we did a whole journey with the engineering team because it is such a big lamp, mm -hmm. but uh, doing the segmented light, I think, helped out to that, but it gives it a very modern graphic, yeah. um, which is identifiable for the C40. Yeah. Now, it's one of my favorite views from the rear because, of course, we also have capsulated that width of the car. Mm. How did we do that? Well, I mean, again, it's to the lamps, where, where the, the SUV bigger brother, let's say the XC40, has one vertical lamp that goes around to the side, but we've decided to swing it back and clamp the puzzle piece or shield as we call it in the rear yeah. that's between the taillights. And that shield stretches all the way out past the, the trunk opening in to the lamp uh, area with body color elements there. So that's how we're really getting that uh, ultimate width view in the rear. Cool. And then looking basically at the side of the car again, I mean, the, the car is sat on some really nice modern aero wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, tell us about them. Yeah, I mean, the stance of the, the three-quarter view in the rear uh, is, is impeccable. Again, accentuated from that wide rear tail lamps, but again, it's planted on these beautiful wheels. Um, you can correlate the connection between what we showed design language-wise in our 360C concept with this very solid architectural approach. Mm -hmm. And we've done a five-spoke version here to be a bit more dynamic, which plays with the C40 itself. Fantastic. Great. All right, so I think now let's, uh, let's maybe move on to talk about the interior and color materials. As I said earlier, it's, it's really about now uh, listening to the, the story of the designers about how they've been influenced by nature and light, similar to exterior design, and also their take on sustainable materials and using natural materials. Let's talk about interior design and colour materials. But first, let's talk about nature, Reka. What a beautiful backdrop we've got today. It's so beautiful today out there. I just love the contrasting seasons here, uh, living in Sweden. And the light is very special too. Even when I came to Sweden first time here, nature stood out for me. It's magical and it's give you different kind of uh, energy altogether. C40 is a very bold and confident design and on the interior um, it's described by the key pure lines in the design. So for example the instrument panel has a continuous graphical window in which the uh, technical elements such as the vents and the screens, we work to embrace that within that continuous line. And then in between those elements leaves this area where we can really showcase the deco material in a beautifully concave surface with some light. Tell us about the deco, Reka. Yeah, deco is a very unique element for us in this car. Uh, it is a combination of uh, the technology and the design. And my specialist, uh, she got inspired from Scandinavian landscapes. How you see the pattern which has been digitalized and it's unregular and it's abstract. And when you backlit, it, you see the magic, uh, uh, how it came out, we were really surprised. And it really uh, fits very well inside our interior and it gives you very light feeling. It's a topography graphic where the light comes through the layers, isn't it? It's really beautiful. So other than space and a calm purity, we're also really looking for functionality in the interior. And C40 here has really good examples of functionality. So for example, the, the door pockets, they're really usefully large due to the fact that the speakers are positioned in front of the instrument panel. The tunnel also has very good functionality. It has the wireless uh, phone charger in the front. It has a small closed storage, 
as well as two very good cup holders and even tissues and a place for a trash bin. Super practical. Yeah. But tell us about the process, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely, because the process that we use uh, is really important to help us feel connected with the space and determine the areas of reach and where the functional elements should be. So we use full-size clay models and there we not only can find the space but we really get the attention to detail and the craftsmanship into all the surfaces. And then we also use virtual reality, so state-of-the-art uh, in the goggles where again we can get a really good sense of the space and even try lots of material options. So now we get a chance to talk about the user experience with the car and I'm here with Tom, our Head of UX Design for Volvo. Um, and Tom, we, we thought we'd start this one actually in a, a living room environment uh, rather than in the car. Why is that? Exactly. It's to show that we're thinking first and foremost about our customers and, and how they go about their daily lives and you know when you start a trip you're always at home and, and we're thinking about how to connect to the car from home mm -hmm. so we're building features into our app that lets you start the car remotely get it heated up and warmed up and, and comfortable for you and we're going to continue to evolve that over time but you do that from home and yeah. not from the car that's good and just um talking about scandinavian design because we've been working with uh, or talking with the exterior team interior color materials and they've been talking a lot about this philosophy of taking things away and simplifying things so and really bring into the surface the important features uh, for the customer and is that the case with our user experience that's exactly right we really think about uh, the customers and what they're doing and and what what their goals are and we really try to look at how do we simplify all of the complexity that's coming to the cars. You know, we have a lot of sensors, there's new cameras, there's lots of applications, especially with the new systems that are coming out. Uh, there's more and more capabilities. And this is gonna be overloading very soon. So what we want to do is really think about the essence, think about how can we bundle things in the smart way and take away that complexity of, of management, make it you know, a really great experience um, and let, let people just get on with their, their lives and have a comfortable ride. So with our new uh, C40 then, of course, the experience starts with, with the mobile phone. Yep. They can set the heat and unlock the car, set their route for the day. Mm -hmm. And then that really plays out into the car, um, which you're going to now take us through and yep. just uh, demo how, how really the user experience plays out from the phone into the car. And also we can talk about Google Assist as well, which is a, yep. a feature that we can go through. Absolutely, we'll, we'll try right. those out in the car now. Cool, let's go. Hello, now we're in the C40 and I'm going to talk to you about the in-car system that we've been working on. So this is the Google Android system and one of the great things is that there's going to be apps available. And here we have the principle of, of connecting to your home um, and your home life is filled with different apps and, and, and things you use. So like when, when I've set this up, I've put my Spotify application over here. So the same music that I have available at home or on my phone when I'm on the run um, is available in my car for me whenever I want. And I didn't even have to connect my phone. It's just, just available. And of course, with the Google system, the other thing that's available is Google Maps. That gives you really efficient uh, directions to wherever you're going. Now, one of the things that are really great is uh, there's a number of features that make it easier to own ele an electric vehicle. So sometimes when we've talked to customers, they have some questions about where do I charge my car and those kinds of things. Well, you can just ask Google. Uh, charging stations show up, you can get very quick directions to them. And so it's all available right there for you. Uh, the other great thing is that there's little details in, in Google Maps. So you, for example, you can get the uh, charge level that you'll be at when you reach your destination, which is really good for planning long trips and, and knowing if you have enough uh, power to reach your destination or if you need to charge on the way. So some really smart things happening there to help simplify uh, the complexity. We've also looked at things like the settings to make it easier to understand, combine things and keep all of the capabilities, but do it in a really smart way to take the hassle out of managing your car. And finally, we have Google Assistant that I want to take you through. Some really great features and capabilities in the car. 
it allows you to control the car and, and do various actions without ever taking your hands off the wheel or your eyes off the road. You can uh, give it basic commands like, hey Google, can you start the seat heater? Okay, turning on the seat heater for the driver. Helps you control your comfort. You can, of course, control music and other commands in the car. And there's one more thing, of course, you can do to have a little bit of fun in your car. Hey Google, tell me a joke. Why did all the students eat their homework? Their teacher told them it was a piece of cake. Mm.